This is Chris Roberts for Meant to Be Seen TV uh, here at CES 2018. I have Ru Wang, who's the Senior Director of Marketing for Pimax. Welcome to the program. Hello, everybody. Um, so this is exciting. Um, I've seen Pimax, I guess, twice previously at CES last year and then at the Game Developers Conference. Um, it's a really impressive headset. Um, are there specific things that have changed from those previous iterations that you have on display this year? Uh, yes. Actually, this one is the uh, the fresh baby coming out of the uh, process, um, production line. So for the we're getting ready for the uh, mass production, and this one uh, is the first one come out, and then we're gonna do some adjustment for the uh, production line, a uh, couple of reiteration later on. Uh, then we're gonna get all the stuff out, and we first we're gonna satisfy the supporters like. Uh, uh, Kickstarter backers, and uh, after that, uh, we're going to launch um, release for the public, uh, general public. Okay, so in broad strokes, what people I think are the most excited about is high resolution and wild field of view. Um, what are the specs for the headset? What is the, the FOVs? Uh, FOVs 200 degrees, okay. and then also uh, the resolution is 4K per eye. 4K per eye. Um, so is there, an, I suffer from having a fairly narrow um, IPD distance, um, and is there an IPD adjustment on the headset? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, it's somewhere here. You can do it. Okay. And then you have tried it, right? Yeah, I did. And I was actually very happy because usually for me with the other headsets, I have to make it as narrow as possible. Uh -huh. And it's still not quite as narrow as, as my okay. eyes. That's good. But it's really good to be able to have that, that comfort. I'm glad you had a good experience. Um, so what sort of hardware requirements should people expect in terms of you know the PC that they're going to have to have to run at solid frame rate? Uh, the uh, the requirement is uh, 1070 and up. So the you know the higher resolution, the more power you need. Okay. Um, and people have been asking about the cabling. Um, is there going to be a single cable? Is it going to be a set of like the ribbon cables for audio, video, and HDMI, or is it DisplayPort, or what? 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 How does it connect to the PC? Well, we have DP1. Okay. Yeah. So it's DisplayPort. Uh, okay, single cable. Okay. <laughs> but then where it connects on the video card, is that display port or is that HDMI? Uh, no, it's not HDMI, it's DP1. DP1. Okay, yes. all good. <laughs> um, so, and it does look like the tracking devices that you have here are a little bit different than the regular Lighthouse. Are, they this, is, is, are these for prototype? Or uh, these, are, these are our um, tracking Lighthouse, okay. and uh, it's compatible with Vive okay. 1.0 and 2.0. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, there, I've heard some people concerned with a wider field of view um, that there's more possibility of motion sickness. Are you guys aware of that, or is there anything that you've done to potentially, you know, improve people's experience with the wider field of view? Of course, we've done a lot. Uh, so I'll let you talk about this. Uh, you've tried it, and then what do you think? Um, for me, it seemed very good. Um, and actually, there was significant improvement over the prototypes that I think I saw last year, where I don't know if it's a change in the optics or the physical orientation within the device. But what I remember seeing before was more color aberration and issues along the periphery. But it seems like it's significantly better now. Um, as far as the motion sickness issues, I can't speak to that specifically myself. I seem to be really lucky. I never really get the simulation sickness um, that a lot of people suffer from. But, okay. um, well, I don't really, uh, we have lines every day like this all the way there. And uh, uh, we have a lot of people trying this out and then they move around in this area. Um, I haven't really heard Nobody's like, been uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I've, maybe I've heard one or two. I mean, I don't really hear a lot of complaints on this. So okay. I will let the user to speak about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it seems like there's two different um, schools of thought in terms of the next generation for VR, either going for higher pixel density and resolution mm. or going for a wider frame rate or a, wild, a wider field of view. Mm. Um, can you talk about, did you guys make specific design decisions to emphasize one or the other, or are you just trying to improve both, or what's the philosophy? So the Pimax, uh, the, the mission for the Pimax is that we want to make the best user experience 
for VR users. And we, we think that uh, the pain point is the low resolution and the field of view. And also the weight, you know, the heavy, the heavy headset, you cannot really feel too much. I mean, you, don't, you cannot uh, wear it for, for long. So we, we are focusing on this right now, and this is, remember, this is the first AK. So after this, we're going to tackle other issues. But these are the top, um, especially field of view, this is the top one we're, we're ta tackling for this release. Yes. Okay. Um, is there an audio solution, or do you need to use your own headphones? Is there a way that you can plug a headphone set into the um, HMD, or do you need to run a separate cable, or what, what's the audio solution? Uh, you beat me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, well, I probably didn't do my homework, but uh, this is not like audio solution. I think it will be integrated in there. That, that we'll check. <laughs> we'll check. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, and I guess one of the last questions I had, um, I've heard in the. Um, Pimax forums and stuff, there's discussion about a technology that's called brain warping. Yes. Are you familiar with this? Yes. Can you explain it to me? Because I, I was trying to read through and it's hard to get. Do you, do you have a... So brain, war <laughs> brain warping is a Pimax specific technology. Okay. okay? And um, the technology, um, I cannot disclose a lot of details on that, but the, the purpose for that is to make sure that we have um, smooth transition for the uh, user experience. Let's say you are upgrading from 2K, 3K, 4K to 8K, and uh, let's say your current, um, your current uh, computer? computer hardware, yeah. <laughs> your current hardware uh, is not that powerful yet, right? So and then how, how do we up upscale the input and the current okay let's re redo this it's all the good. current the current hardware and and also the content is not there yet right and then how do you upscale this this is one of our thing and also the you know like the fresh rate you know how do you pump it up um, this is this is the, the technology we're using Okay. Yeah, to make sure that you have a smooth transition. Of course, later on, maybe it, you know you will upgrade your hardware. You and a lot of uh, HD content is coming out. You know, high resolution coming out, and then you 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 can have like go straight forward using 8K. But now we wanted you have the best experience to upgrade to 8K. Okay. Um, so I've heard, and maybe you could explain a little bit, the successful Kickstarter program that you guys had? Yes, yes. So you want to hear the story? Okay. So the Kickstarter. Uh, the Kickstarter, our original goal was 200K US dollar. And uh, within about 75 minutes, when we started Kickstarter, uh, we, got, we reached our goal. That was so exciting. And, but it comes with a problem. It's the 75. Are we, you know, we, we have to keep going. So we reached a million, million five, two million, three million, four million. Eventually, we get we got two, four million twenty three something thousand U.S. dollar. Twenty one times. That was very exciting. We were so happy that we get this overwhelmed, uh, warm support from the VR community and the backers. Uh, so now uh, we're really focusing on release this much bigger than expected um, number um, with the same with the same standard to our backers, and then we can uh, release to the public general um, general public. And the the headset we give to backers and also uh, will be the same to the general general release. Okay. Yes. So I imagine. Most of the resources initially are focused on satisfying the Kickstarter backers. What's the time frame that they should expect? Uh, we're going to start shipping in Q1. Okay. And then, do you have any expectation as far as once that need is satisfied, when they'll be available for general purchase and acquisition? Uh, purchase and acquisition? Well, no, for, for people <laughs> to buy the, the headset, okay. not the company. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I don't really I don't because okay. you know like we were not planning for we were not planning for this much 21 times okay. you know we were not planning for this much and then now we're uh, you know we're a hardware company so we we need to negotiate with our supply chain you know 
to to get uh, the, it all has um, turnaround time. You know, like for for this much, 21 times. It's a big number. Yeah, it's a good problem to have. Thank you so much for your support. Hi. <laughs> okay. Were there any other points that you wanted to bring up or talk about that I haven't asked, or is there any specific message you have for people who are interested in Pimax? Uh, I'm really moved because a lot of people see me on YouTube. Okay. So <laughs> I'm really moved. You know, well, during the um, process of doing the Kickstarter and also, you know, after this, after Kickstarter, CES, and you know, um, there are a lot of backers come up to me and talking to me, and also like a. Uh, Somebody like you, Chris, uh, you know, like just took your time, come over, talk to us, tell us what you want, and tell us your expectations, and then also your support. Uh, I'm really, uh, it's very, uh, I really appreciate, you know, the support. It, it means a lot for us, and th th this will keep us going, and um, uh, we will do this together. Splendid. So thank you so much for your time. It's really exciting to see, and the response that I've seen in the crowds here at the show has been tremendous. So um, once again, I'm Chris Roberts for Meant to be Seen TV here at CES 2018. Um, keep watching. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you. Bye-bye.